harbour master's main role and main function in life is to oversee the safety of navigation in his port and to organise the efficient arrival and departure of ships into and out of his port. Also, he is charged with the coordination of many of the operations within the port, such as cargo operations and things like that. So it's quite, a, it's quite an all-encompassing role. Good preparation forms the basis for a safe and efficient voyage. There are two parts to this preparation. From the previous port to the pilot station and from the pilot station to the quay. In this film, we show what the impact and cost can be if we do not provide the captain with the right information for preparing the voyage properly. And the better the information, the better the operation. Now, the harbour master is generally regarded as one of the most reliable sources of port information in particular. So it's very important that we um, pass the information to all the parties and stakeholders who work in the port. The first part of the preparation, from the previous port to the pilot station, is the major factor in an economical voyage because of its importance in terms of costs and emissions. An example, two Aframax tankers travelling from Gibraltar to Rotterdam. Distance, 1,348 nautical miles. Vessel 1 without correct port information. Speed 15 knots. The voyage takes 3.7 days. Fuel consumption, 232.2 tonnes. Vessel 2 with correct port information. Speed 12 knots. This vessel takes 4.7 days. Consumption, 148.4 tonnes. The difference, 83.8 tonnes representing $35,700. In other words, an enormous saving in fuel and emissions, 250 tonnes less of CO2. The ETA reported by the captain is important for all of the service providers. Therefore, the captain needs information on tidal windows and terminal planning. If the captain does not have this information, it is impossible for him to provide a correct ETA. As a result, pilot, boatman and tugs are given incorrect ETA information, which in turn can lead to irritation and delays. Uh, four and two. Chuck boom made fast on the... The second part of the preparation of the voyage between pilot station and quay concerns the preparation of vessel and crew for docking. This is important for bringing the vessel into position quickly and therefore also in terms of emissions and costs in the port. And also for a speedy start to loading and unloading. Cost management for vessel and terminal. This concerns, for example, terminal information such as mooring plans, diameter, and position of manifolds. Uh, a good mooring plan is vital and you know anybody who works in ports will tell you that they've spent hours standing on the quay trying to get ships to put ropes out in certain ways and to put the sufficient number of ropes out so therefore if you can get the information to the ship before she arrives so everyone knows exactly what happens it's going to make the operation much smoother also it'll make it quicker shorter and there'll be benefits there you know a plant like tugs and pilots can be used more efficiently if they're not so long on a job to be able to plan both parts of the voyage properly, it is necessary to have general port information and specific port information. General port information is given via the Port Information Guide and specific port information via Avanti. There is also much to be gained in terms of emissions when leaving port. Because the engine is still cold and the turbines still have to get up to pressure, setting the telegraph to full speed ahead straight after departure is not only bad for the engine but also bad for the environment. And in any case, in the short distance from key to pilot station, only a few minutes can be gained at most. Environmental aspects in, harbor are be, in harbors are becoming increasingly more important and if we have timely information given to the ship about what is going to happen to the ship, that in its nature will make the operation shorter and therefore you will reduce emissions and you reduce uh, misuse of resources and I think that's a big improvement.
30 minutes faster docking per vessel is achievable. And that makes a big difference in emissions. For example, 12,000 tonnes CO2 less in one year for a port like Rotterdam. And EU ports also have to make their contribution to environmental objectives. There is, of course, uh, cooperation between all parties can always be improved. And if you take, for example, the current situation where ships are getting very much bigger, crews are getting smaller, so the need for vital information in a timely manner is extremely important. It will speed up operations and it will also, funnily enough, lead to the reduction of emissions in ports because we can do the operation more quickly.